Let's practice right now opening ourselves to change and living your life with greater grace and ease. So find a place where you can sit quietly for a few moments, close the door, turn off your phone, and give yourself this time to connect to your true Flutworms, like itself. flukes, are also very complicated. All your ideas, the eggs pass out with bowel contents were not meant to be eaten as such. They were meant to hatch in a pond where snails and minnows eat them. The larva grow up in this new secondary host. Later, the snail sheds them and they attach themselves to foliage near the pond. They overwinter in a tough metasarcaria cyst. An unsuspecting browsing animal now eats them. To a relationship. They this come out of their metasarcaria the cyst as small and adult and quickly attach themselves to the intestine with a sucker. They now have safe haven and can go up, about maturing and laying eggs. We stiffen. Four common flukes are the human so intestinal the fluke, human liver fluke, sheep liver fluke, pancreatic fluke of cattle. Don't let the Notice terms sheep and cattle mislead you. They are all found in, in humans. The worst parasites. Fasciolapsis bosque is the fluke flatworm that I find in every case of cancer, cancer HIV infection, Alzheimer's, Crohn's disease, kaposis, endometriosis, and in any people without these diseases. Its life cycle involves six different stages. The first stage is egg. Second, Miracidia, third, Fridia, four, Circaria, and five, Metacircaria. Now, the normal life cycle of the egg, which is the first stage, expel with bowel movement into soil, wash by rain into pans. The second stage, which is the Miracidia, normal life cycle is that it hatches from egg in water, as Celia can swim vigorously and must find intermediate snail host in one to two hours and may be too exhausted to invade. The third stage, Redia, normal life cycle is developed inside Miracidia as little balls until expelled. Those are mother Redia, and each one bears daughter Redia of up to eight months all still inside the snail and living on the fluids in the lymphatic spaces. Similarly, data radia are continually developing circaria. The fourth stage circaria, normal life cycle of a teal, use it to exit from snail and swim to a plant. If the snail is feeding on a plant, so here you can latch onto plant with sucker mouth and start to insist or form a cocoon within minutes. Tail breaks off and swims away to dissolve. The fifth stage metacircaria. Normal life cycle two wild cyst. The outer wall is very sticky, but as you eat the plant, it is stuck too. The least pressure will break it, leaving the cyst in the mouth. The almost unbreakable inner cyst wall protects it from chewing and the keratin-like coat prevents digestion by stomach juices. However, when it reaches the deodinum, contact with intestinal juices dissolve away the cyst wall and freeze it. It then fastens itself to the intestinal lining and begins to develop into an adult. 
The sixth stage is the adult. Now the normal life cycle of an adult lives in your intestine and can produce 1,000 eggs per bowel movement and live many years. Note that the adult is the only stage that normally lives in the humor and then only in the intestine. Fasciolapsis depends on a snail called a secondary host for a part of its life cycle. But when your body has solvent in it, the other five stages can develop in you. If propyl alcohol is the solvent, the intestinal fluke is invited to use another organ as a secondary host. This organ will become cancerous. If benzene is the solvent, the intestinal fluke uses the thymus for its secondary host, setting the stage for eats. Wood alcohol invites pancreatic flukes to use the pancreas of a secondary host. This leads to pancreatic dysfunction, which we call diabetes. If xylene or toline are the solvents, I typically see any of four flukes using the brain as a secondary host. If methyl ethyl ketone, MEK or methyl butyl ketone, MBK are the solvent, the uterus becomes a secondary host and endometriosis a likely result. This is a new kind of parasitism based on pollution. I call the disease caused by fluke stages in inappropriate locations fluke disease. Are tapeworms and roundworms affected by solvents this way too? This is a fascinating and very important question. Search for the answer can help others search for the answer. Search for the answer and help others search for the answer. I do not know yet. Pollution. Pollutants are all the dead things around us that should not get into your body because they interfere with its work. As long as they don't penetrate your tissues, they won't interfere like plastic eyeglasses and clothing. But if they are invasive, your body must fight to remove them. Pollutants can invade your body via the air you breathe, the foods and beverages you eat, and the products you put on your skin. The biggest tragedy is not recognizing when a pollutant is harming you. Two people can use the same face cream. One develops a rash, the other does not. The one who did not assume the cream is not harmful to them, that they are like a bank vault impregnable to that product. A better assumption is that the face cream is somewhat toxic as evidenced by the rash that can develop and they escape the rash only because they had a stronger immune system. The immune system is like money paid out of the bank vault for every toxic invasion. When the money is gone, the bank, your health feels solvent pollution. Solvents are compounds that dissolve things. Water is a useful life-giving solvent. Most other solvents dissolve fats and are life-threatening because fats from the membrane wall around each of your cells, especially our nerve cells. The solvent that does the most harm is benzene. It goes to the thymus, ruins our immune system and causes AIDS. The next worst solvent is propyl alcohol. It goes to the liver and causes cancer in some distant organ. Other major culprits of disease are xylene, toline, 
wood, alcohol, methyl chloride, and try. Good.